The dehumanization of an entire race was a process requiring many steps. One occurred here. This beautiful island, shrouded in fog, is home to what was once a fortress built by the British in the 1670s. Out there is the mouth of the Putloko Creek. Mm -hmm. African middlemen used to bring their slaves and goods down the Putloko Creek through the mouth of the Putloko Creek out there, all the way to this beach here. So they came right through that gap yes, right sir. there. Yes. They would bring them here, they march them straight up there and sell them. Up this hill, mm -hmm. up onto the trading area. Though its walls have long crumbled, I could still get a sense of how this place once worked. This was the main entrance into the fort. It had a double folding door with a little room patch on top. British officers lived here in a lavish two-story mansion. The high cost of purchasing even a single slave meant that most masters tried to breed their own labor force. And some went to great lengths to make it happen, from forced pairings of slave couples to rape. Of all the major slave societies in the New World, only in the United States did the slave population naturally increase over time. The 400,000 people that we imported from Africa had become nearly four million by the outbreak of the Civil War. The numbers are staggering, and so was the violence required to keep them all under control. 22-year-old Kathleen Neal was working for racial justice through the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. But the rising call for black power awakened her desire for something more radical. After meeting Panther Minister of Information, Eldridge Cleaver, Kathleen moved west, married Cleaver, and took charge of communications for the party. The question is not, will it be nonviolence versus violence, but whether a human being can practice his God-given right of self-defense. The Panthers came up with their own bold new solution to the long-standing problem of police harassment in the ghetto, armed community patrols. They just assume their Second Amendment rights. They say, we have the right to defend ourselves under this Constitution, and we're going to do it openly and publicly. We would have power to determine the destiny of our own community. We would not be subject to police brutality. And that was a pretty direct take in the streets with their weapons, patrolling the police. It was something that the Oakland police had never encountered. <laughs> 